some moments in skateboarding, most of them really, simply wash over us without the strength or meaning to leave a lasting impression. But a select few continue to reverberate throughout our shared history. For example, it's impossible to catalog modern street skateboarding without citing the advancements Mark Gonzalez and Nadas Kapas made in the late 80s. Any upswing in small board brands elicits an instant comparison to the empire Steve Rocco built in the early 90s. You can also trace the roots of the East Coast skateboarding archetype directly back to Dan Wolf's Eastern Exposure 3. And just like these culture-defining moments, it will be impossible to understand the 2010s without mentioning 2013 and all the major events that occurred within. 2013 was a tumultuous time for the skateboarding industry. Banner pros were leaving their longtime sponsors to strike out on their own, full-length videos were being slowly replaced by internet-exclusive solo parts, and Instagram was threatening to undermine seemingly every single aspect of print and digital media. As the long-standing status quo crumbled, skateboarders paid more attention to the global and underground players, they took big steps toward becoming more inclusive, and they adapted to a fluctuating social media landscape. All of these events culminated in an updated framework that continues to guide our culture today. But don't take our word for it. Follow along as we revisit the major events of 2013, researched and compiled into a single timeline, and judge for yourself. Beginning just a few months before 2013, Girl and Chocolate's Pretty Sweet premieres on November 17, 2012 to mixed reviews. After Krill Tap spent the better part of two decades dictating trends and cycles in trick selection, clothing, filming, editing, and more, it becomes clear that Pretty Sweet doesn't have the cultural cachet to act as a long-term trendsetter. By early 2013, skateboarders are left adrift of one of their former guides. In February, after months of viewer debate about Pretty Sweet, Ty Evans claims in an interview that issues with the video resulted from too many cooks in the kitchen. Many interpret this as an indication that long-term relationships and confidence within a legacy skate brand are deteriorating. On March 11th, Thrasher posts the clip of Forrest Edwards' switch flip down Wallenberg on YouTube as a single trick via their Magnified feature. Although well-established at this point, past installments of Magnified were either cross-promotions for advertisers or a way to highlight videos released on Thrasher's website. Not only is Forrest Edwards' switch flip an enderworthy trick on a legendary spot, the clip is never used in a proper video. After its release, the door is now open to use single tricks as web-based content, rather than saving clips for a video part model that would be replicated time and time again as clips slowly transform into regular content that keeps brands in skateboarders' eyes. Later in March, Isle Skateboards, a UK-centric board brand helmed by Nick Jensen and Paul Shire, rises out of Blueprint's ashes and immediately makes waves for its minimalist art direction and niche team. Isle is the first board brand of many formed in 2013, one of the first brands created by a still active pro who came to prominence in the 2000s, and, most importantly, one of the few European brands with major distribution in both the United States and Europe. Still a rarity for most European brands. As a result, consumers on both sides of the Atlantic have easy access to aisle boards within weeks of the unveiling, allowing for the brand's impact to ripple even farther. In April, Leo Baker's bombshell part debuts on Thrasher's website and YouTube channel. Although Leo came out as trans in 2019, at the time of publication, bombshell is one of the first parts from a woman presenting skateboarder Thrasher hosted on their website and their YouTube channel, and it later becomes the first part from a trans skateboarder that the outlet hosted. For years, the skateboard industry had neglected women and non-binary skateboarders, forcing the two groups to create their own support systems and rely on contest funds, rather than sponsorships, to make a living. With Bombshell, Leo opens doors for women and LGBTQ skateboarders around the world and becomes an effective advocate for equality and gender inclusivity. In May, Anthony Van Anglen and Jason Dill quit their longtime board sponsor Alien Workshop via an Instagram post without listing a reason. The two are rumored to be turning fucking awesome into a board brand. Within weeks, established pros follow suit. Brian Anderson quits Girl on May 16th to start 3D, with Alex Olsen joining him shortly afterwards. Paul Rodriguez quits Plan B on July 31st to start Primitive Skateboards, and Jerry Sue quits Enjoy in August to ride for chocolate. The ensuing chaos and rumors shake faith in legacy brands at a precarious time. In the middle of June, Instagram launches in-app video sharing, allowing users to film and edit videos up to 15 seconds long and post them to their accounts in real time. 
This solidifies the skateboard industry's embrace of the technology immediately. Pros can share clips and keep themselves in the public's eye, while unsponsored skateboarders can now gain recognition and a platform without relying on the industry. And everyone can share and react to major news and events as they break, rather than months after the fact. In July's issue of Thrasher, during a discussion about the future of skateboarding, Nigel Houston is quoted saying that skateboarding is not for girls at all, not one bit. Thanks to social media, the quote goes viral and spurs instant and direct backlash from skateboarders as well as key members of the industry. Nigel quickly apologizes via a Twitter post, but his comments force skateboarders to take a hard look at themselves and their values. The conversations about inclusivity and sensitivity within skateboarding continue to this day. Throughout the year, a new class of underground filmers and editors happy to experiment with the content and format of the modern skate video rise to prominence through their extensive catalogs of work, exemplified in August when Peter Sidlaskis pushes lo-fi to the forefront with Bronze 56K's solo jazz. Other notable video releases include Colin Reed spanning multiple countries in Tengu, God of Mischief. Jacob Harris reigned in a new era of English skateboarding with 11th Hour. Will Rosenstock captured Gilbert Crockett in his hometown of Richmond for Old Dominion. And John Wilson and company continued their unprecedented productivity with Beef Patty. These filmers, and many more, eventually make the skate video as we know it weirder, broaden what's accepted within the status quo, contribute to the further regionalization of skateboarding, and push the boundaries of what skate videos are, influencing many filmers in the coming years. 2013 also marks the beginning of the era where the stigma of quitting an established board brand and starting your own thing eventually breaks, and small board brands become accessible for everyone, and in a way, a status symbol to many. As knowledge, demand, and accessibility of smaller brands grows, thanks to social media and straight-to-consumer web stores, the number of board brands available grows in kind. More skateboarders recognize the realities of being a sponsored skateboarder versus focusing on their own projects, questioning their position in the industry and if they have what it takes to run a successful brand. In November, Bill Strobeck finishes filming for the first Supreme full-length, Cherry. The video, which Strobeck says is intended to represent what skateboarding is like right now, is a free-form reflection of skateboarding's new status quo. Up-and-comers mingling alongside established legends, personality taking center stage, and kids looking to the distant past for inspiration. After premiering in March of 2014, Cherry propels its crew to stardom, encourages further experimentation in skateboarding, and instantly sets the next wave of trends. As a result, Supreme quickly fills the cultural void Krill Tap left behind in late 2012. The video's long-term influence is still felt to this day. Finally, in December, Ishad Ware comes to represent excellence in skateboarding when he's crowned Thrasher's Skater of the Year. Skateboarding hit new peaks in 2013. Brandon Westgate brought power in a modern trick selection back to the classic crust of the East Coast. Dane Berman took handrail skating to uncomfortable places. Mark Suchu made once unheard of ledge tricks look easy. Ben Rayborn put his own retro spin on modern transition skating and figures like Eric Ellington, Jamie Thomas, and Bob Burnquist redefined what it means to age gracefully as a pro skater. But a shot stands out above all the chaos, filming full parts for Nike and Four Star and shooting interviews for multiple magazines while picking up additional projects in his spare time. His level of productivity set a new standard for pro skateboarding in 2014 and beyond. Going forward, Pro skaters are expected to juggle multiple projects simultaneously, be active and visible on social media, and skate at a high level with finesse and charisma. Fast forwarding a decade to 2023, we can easily recognize the influence of this pivotal year on skateboarding's industry and culture. Instagram and YouTube have completely reinvented the value and purpose of clips, and even the skate video as a whole, defining the new norm of how we discover and watch skateboarding. Strobeck's personality-focused, stylized video presentation remains a dominant style that influences many of skateboarding's filmmakers, both new and established. Brands from Europe, Australia, Japan, and Canada all stand as equals alongside their American counterparts, furthering the decentralization of skateboarding's industrial presence and cultural influences. 
Female and LGBTQ communities have not only continued to grow their own outlets and support systems, but have also further broken down the barriers keeping them out of the established industry. Similar to previous watershed moments of the last century, the impact of this relatively small moment in time will likely stay with us for decades to come.